After two Toyota wins and two Nissan wins in the Autovax Japan GT Championship, the Honda fans and teams are hanging out. Surely it's their turn for a win. The trouble is this is the Japan Special GT Cup at Fuji, a track that's far from being well suited to Honda handing out everyone a hiding. Then again, the thing the Hondas do have in their favour is this. If they haven't done well in the series so far, they sure don't have a heap of handicap weight on board. And that's something the front-running Toyotas and Nissans definitely can't say. Akira Ida and Juichi Wakasaka, defending champions and joint championship leaders, have 90kg on their Supra, and that should keep them out of winning contention here. The same goes for Michael Krum and Satoshi Motoyama, tied for the points lead. And for their Nissan teammates Richard Lyons and Masami Kagiyama, third in the standings. They each have 70 kilo handicaps. For fourth place Benoit Treloya and Yuji Ide, winners at the last round, it's even worse. They are carrying 120 kilos and are resigned to being also rans. Their team's taken on an extra 50 kg by choosing a larger air restrictor for the turboed V6. We are quite quick and straight, but the uh, problem is brake stability is really too heavy and we have some problems for setting up the car. And also the tyre will be used very, very quick, I think, during the race. The GT300 points leader is similarly loaded up with weight with a 60 kg handicap. Yes, it's very difficult with 60 kilos. It's like having a one person on board on a car, so it's very difficult to accelerate and also for braking in the corners. The health of the JGTC is again in evidence. The field including another brand new car, a second works Toyota Celica for established GT300 frontrunners Kei Tasawa and Guts Jonai. We want to win, obviously, but let's be humble and say podium. And for the rest of the season, what do you think? What's your hopes? So of course, we want to win, but it's not an easy series, obviously. So we, there's so much learn, more to learn, so we want to do, have a good season. There's a new Southeast Asian entry here too. A Mazda RX-7 driven by Malaysian Tenku Jan Lei and experienced Japanese racer Tetsuya Yamano. For the first time JGTC entrant, it's a toe in the water exercise. Well, this year, this is kind of like uh, just a testing ground for us to, to, to see what the GT is about and uh, to, to gain more experience, basically. My, my objective for this weekend is just to finish the race. Yeah. I think it's a great opportunity for Malaysians to be exposed in the uh, international racing uh, scene. But for Malaysian-based Japanese team owner Genji Hashimoto, this is the next step in the realisation of a dream to pioneer Malaysians racing GTs internationally. He and the much-experienced Hong Kong driver Charles Kwan started it by joining the JGTC last year, running a GT300 BMW M3. Now Hashimoto is negotiating to buy a new works-built Lamborghini Murcielago for himself and Kwan. My BMW next year is a two Malaysian driver and Malaysian team. And should be what I try to get for step out. Me and for Charles have to step up or GT500 class also. Maybe after one or two years later, we are using for two Malaysian driver to but entering for GT500 class. Yes. There is another part to the Hashimoto dream. I hope a uh, South Asian team is a uh, fast entering for. 11, 24 hours. This is a. I try to happen to 005.
despite bad luck and disappointment at every round so far, Yuji Tashikawa is very confident about beating the Nissans here. So it's not only. Yeah, they get very fast on the race, so I think uh, we have to watch out for them. But um, we really have to win this race. It's, I think it's the last chance for us to challenge the championship. Yes, we want to, we're going to win pole today and then uh, tomorrow it's going to be pole to win. True to his word, in qualifying he heads a dominant Toyota display with six Supras in the top seven. Italian Marco Apicella and Takuya Kurosawa take a standout second on the grid, but no, they have more than the pole sitter to worry about. Actually, I think there are many cars where, where uh, we have to fight with, uh, so it will be a very hard battle, I think, today. For me, it's very difficult to say where we will be ended. I hope in the top three, at, at least. Even amidst such Toyota strength, there's good news for Honda. Sebastian Philippe and Rio Mishigami qualifying third. We didn't expect to have so hard the beginning of year, so we had to work a lot. But now it's getting better, so hopefully we'll be able to, to score some big points now until the end of the year. Takeshi Tsuchiya puts the Supra he shares with Eric Komas fourth. Yeah, yeah. For well, three consecutive races, we've been on the top four position at the starting. We've been leading races, but not yet winning, you know, we've been uh, a bit unlucky. It's about time for that podium again, I think, that's, uh, that's what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, it's again. Time. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's time. Yeah, it's time. More than time. Yeah. <laughs> In an astounding performance, Joichi Wakasaka qualifies the number one Toyota fifth, despite the 90 kilos of weight on board. I think we'd be alive. We say it doesn't mean any, you know, we don't feel it, but uh, not as much, I guess, because I think, like I said, the team is doing very well, and it, it really, it really works. I think they, the car feels very heavy on the straight, though. Co-leaders in the point standings, Michael Crum and Satoshi Motoyama, qualify eighth, two cars behind Ida and Wakisaka. Very impressive, I have to say. Uh, very fast lap time from the number one uh, Toyota. I will take the start today, so it will be my job to push to put the car in ahead of the number one car. That will be my job. So. Toyotas are also dominant in GT300. The new Celicas claiming the front row, with Minoru Tanaka and Takeyuki Aoki on pole. I missed many, many races, so yes. we have uh, enough power to get a winning. Yeah. Just unfortunately, I mean, yeah. it's, but this time, I want to do. Good. Really good, really, really want to do the winning, so. Despite soaring temperatures, a crowd of more than 50,000 has turned up at Fuji Speedway for what will be the last JGTC race here before the circuit's completely rebuilt. And if it's hot for the spectators, imagine how it's going to be inside the cars during their 68 laps around this Fuji layout. Well, Tashi Kara, of course, was cool and quick in qualifying, taking pole by two tenths of a second from Apicella. Mishigami was just one tenth of a second slower, a standout third for Honda, ahead of Takeshi Tsuchiya. Wakasaka took fifth despite a 90 kilo handicap ahead of Naoki Hitori's Supra. Then in seventh came to four with Motoyama eighth, still within 0.7 of a second of pole. In GT300, Aoki did the job, taking pole with a 1 minute 31 second lap, two tenths quicker than Sawa and the other Salika. Hoshino did well in the Sylvia for third ahead of Suga and the big Mosler. Then it was Sasaki and the reckless MRS ahead of Yamada and the Viper, Yogo's Porsche and Nitta and the Garaya, still within a second of pole. So Hironori Takeuchi leading the field to the green light. He's a man who must be finding it just a bit hard not to feel desperate to get into contention finally in this series after a series of disappointments. He's been on pole before, but so far just a fourth place to show for it. Takura Kurosawa tucks in behind him, then it's Sebastian Philippe in the Honda. Takeshi Suchia trying to go around the outside of Philippe in the Toyota. Don't know that he's going to make that stick. 
Everyone else looks like they're safely through in the GD500s. Oh, and yes, Sachia has got up to third place, so the Philippe Honda back in fourth now. In GD300, the top three on the grid hold their places. Oh, a little bit of pushing and shoving further back. That's Adeshi Matsuda in the Ferrari, right off the edge of the track, but he recovers quickly. Lights are blazing down the front straight at Fuji. Takeuchi leading. A big gaggle of Toyotas with just one Honda breaking them up at the moment. That is Philippe in fourth place. Eda behind him. Then there's another couple of Toyotas before the first of the Nissans. Check it out as they come through the turn. Toyota, 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 Nissan, Nissan, Nissan. The three of them running together. Out front in GD300, Aoki is opening up a gap on the other Celica, the one driven by Guts Jonai. So a good start from him. Ah, travelling on board with Sebastian Philippe. He wants that third place back from Suchia. Looks like he's going to get it. Down the inside into turn one. And Suchia coming back at him, but no. That's it, the Honda's back in third. Second on back in GD300 shows Hoshino in third. There's the Viper next and the reckless MRS. Back on board with Philippe, though. Just going past the Malaysian Mazda. No, he's not. He's caught up there. Slowed down, and that's why Debris all over the track. And now suchia has got him back again. So this is a great fight between these two. Whoa, more Debris. And smoke up ahead. Looks like slow-moving cars there. Oh, Tsuchiya just about pulls into them. And there they are. That's the Mazda RX-7 and the BMW of Genji Hashimoto. Charles Kwan at the wheel. Obviously had a big coming together. So they head off to the pits. Here's the leaders. Oh, and more trouble. That's Benoit Treloyer turning around. And I think the other Nissans, at least one of them, were involved in that. Treloyer loses the back wing of the Kelsonic car and gets a bang in the right rear wheel as well. So it could be some damage there. Let's look at the replay. There it is in the background. Sure enough, he turns around another one of the Nissans. That's uh, Masami Kageyama's car. Turns around as well, and Michael Krum just manages to avoid them. Wow, what a nightmare for the Nissan team bosses watching on. No problems for Aoki, though, out front in GD300. Oh, now this is Yoshimi Yoshibashi off on turn one as well, flying through the gravel. Back on board with Philippe. Looks like he's on attack now. Oh, he's got past Suchi already. This is against Kurosawa. So now he's trying to get up to second place. Hold on, does he do it? He's got him. And Ida has moved past Suchi as well. So it looks like Takeshi Suchi has struck troubles in that wood one Toyota. He's somewhere well. He's way further back. He's dropped way down. He's being hassled now by Michael Krum. So Krum taking his turn to go past as well. Looks like some problem on board that Wood 1 Toyota. Oh, and now Hattori's going by him as well. So that will push Suchia back to seventh place. That's not been a good start from the Michelin shot car. Oh, now it's Kei Daka and the other team, Gaika Kuya Porsche, who's in trouble on the same corner. The leader comes on through. No problems for him. Second place now, that Takata Dome car and the Zen Supra. Oh, and a challenge here. This is second place gone to Ashino in the Sylvia. So he's got past Guts Jonai, Salika. So second and third looks like Jonai trying to come back at him. And here comes the race leader flashing the lights as he negotiates some lap traffic. The Mosler off to the right there. Takeuchi doing a very good job and getting a bit of a break. Here's the second, third, fourth, fifth place. Guys, look how close they are. The Nissan of Michael Krum right up behind Akira Ida's SO Supra now. Very competitive little part of the race, this one. And they're just catching up with Jeremy Dufour's advanced Supra. That's already been in the pits much earlier than everybody else. Back at Fuji Speedway, we're at the halfway mark in this JGTC round five. And into the pits pulls Michael Krum to hand over to Satoshi Motoyama. He's the last of the front-running cars to come into pit lane. Here's Mishigami leading Wakasaka out. And look at this, they've got ahead of Tashikawa in that AU Surumo Supra that led most of the first half. But Tashikawa's got him immediately. Wakasaka, of course, has come out on cold tyres, whereas uh, Tashikawa's been out there for a lap or two. Now Satoshi Motoyama gets into the race in the Nissan. And that's just as Tashikawa lines up Mishigami. Looks like he's caught him up very, very quickly. Same problem for the Honda driver, of course. No tyre warmers at the pit stop. Therefore, the drivers have to tippy-toe around just for a little while. 
So it looks like the AU Sarumo Super has picked up where it left off in the lead of this race. Ah, oh, this is Minoru Tanaka waiting to get on board the lead GT300. Oh, look at this. This is Takeuchi's view of the Nissan, which has got out ahead of him. So Satoshi Motoyama leads, but not for long by the look of it, because Tashikawa carries a huge amount of speed onto the front straight, and he just goes straight past. So this time, the Sarumo car is back in the lead. This is the pit stop for the lead GT300 car, the Wed Sport Celica. Minoru Tanaka gets underway. Looked like a quick stop. And talking about quick, that's what this Takata Dome Honda is here at Fuji today. Surprisingly, maybe, it's not a track that really suits the Hondas, but this car in the hands of Sebastian Philippe in the first half, and now with Ryo Mishigami at the wheel, is very, very quick. And Satoshi Motoyama is really feeling the heat now. This is the Honda comes back down the outside of him. Into turn one. Motoyama tries to fight back. But no, he's going to be denied. So that will make the Honda back in second place. Here's our race leader, Yuji Tashikawa. This has been a very dominant display from this car, that's for sure. Oh, trouble here for Jeremy Dufour in the Advan Toyota. And it looks like the Nissan 350Z have tangled and gone heavily into the tyre wall. No such problem for Mishigami, but he does still have Motoyama's Nissan very close behind him. So still a good fight between these two. And a pretty impressive run from Motoyama and Krum in that Nissan, because that is carrying quite a bit of weight here today. Oh, this is a replay of an earlier incident between Richard Lyons' Nissan and Keita Sawa's Celica, both sustaining quite heavy damage. No problems whatsoever for Minoru Tanaka and the other Salika though, opening up a good gap now at the lead of the GT300 field. Here's the second place car, Uimatsu Tadao at the wheel now of the Dacian Silvia. He and Katsuo Hoshino are having a very good run on this car today. And here's Satoru Goto, one of the series points leaders already and doing very well here today with third place. Tashikawa with only a lap or two to go now. Looks like finally the AU Surumo team's going to break its hoodoo this year. He's got a good buffer now on Mishigami in second and Motoyama in third place. Uh-oh, tyres out in the race leader's pit. This could be trouble. In fact, it turns out he is on the last lap. But you can see the box sign on the pit wall means that they considered calling him into the pits just now. He's gone on by. Worried faces on the radio. Could be bad news. Yes, it is. Smoke coming from the AU Surumo Supra on this last lap of the race and very slow in the corners there. This team has been so dominant here today. Surely they're not going to get struck down at the very last moment. And But it looks like it. Mishigami closing right in. Let's see if he's recovered from the problem. No, more smoke and very slow into this left-hander. And Mishigami's gone by. And Motoyama goes past too. What a disaster for the AU Surumo team. Tashikawa, third place still. That even could be under threat. Mishigami's gone clear for the lead. Yes, he's going to lead home Satoshi Motoyama. And this, what a turnaround for the Honda team. Totally unexpected to do well here today, and now they've won the race. Mishigami takes it out. Motoyama in second place. Well, it's an unexpected win, but you can't say it's not deserved. Mishigami very happy. He and Philippe have been very strong here. And if Takeuchi and Tashikawa can't win it, the Honda boys really deserve it. Great celebrations on pit wall with Sebastian Philippe getting the hugs from his teammates. Very, very happy people, and you can understand why. Here's Minoru Tanaka taking a dominant GT300 win for Toyota. And here's the other side of the coin, a dejected Yuji Tashikawa walking away from the AU Surumo car that did finish third, while the victors celebrate. Yeah, very happy. A little bit lucky and uh, sad for, for the car at EA because this is bad luck. But uh, we have been struggling so long from the beginning of the year. Uh, we have done a very, very good race today. So, yeah, very, very happy to, to finish like this. Yeah, very, very happy.
思ってないあの後ろのスカイラインを抑える。He knew that the gap was closing up in the like last three laps, but I think he thought it was at first it was a tactic because they're trying to be more safe. But then they realized the tire was start start to wear out, so the tire smoking. It's unbelievable for NSX to be winning this um, this track. This morning before the race, it looked like things were maybe a little bit against you, just a little bit with the number one car in good position. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it it was uh, tough uh, to overtake him. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've all seen that. I think it was a little a rough fight there, yeah. and uh, finally we we got by in the pits, but made off big time. Yeah. yeah. So it was it was good race. We had a, a good fun. Thank you, Shizan. So sorry. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but this is race, so you can't really help it. We had a 10 second gap, so it was quite obvious that we thought we were going to win the race, but um, we're very disappointed. Yeah, I mean, we it could have been best we won the race, but um, yeah. I guess it's too bad, but that's the way it is. Congratulations, well done. Thank you. Yeah? It was very hot. <laughs> I'm sure it, it was. very hot, I mean, <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Yeah. yeah. You okay, though? Yeah. yeah, just, just. Just. Under 10 lap, maybe, yeah. maybe not. <laughs> Good for uh, winning, for to make new cars, man. Exactly. Yeah, I think this guy is many. What many people is working so hard. I mean, yeah. so hard, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's all mechanic is uh, couldn't sleep last night. So Mishigami and Philippe take this surprise victory by just half a second from Motoyama and Krum, while the so unlucky Takeuchi and Tashikawa salvaged third, just half a second ahead of Wakasaka and Ida, with Suchir and Komas coming home fifth. In GT300, Aoki and Tanaka take the first win for the new Toyota Celica, a full lap ahead of the Uematsu, Hashino, Nissan Silvia, and the Sasaki Goto MRS. Motoyama and Krum haven't had a win this year, but three podiums and regular finishes make them top of the standings. Former co-leaders Ida and Wakasaka drop the second ahead of Lions and Kagiyama. Yamaji and Nishizawa didn't figure at all in the front running here in GT300, but fourth gets them a three-point lead over Sasaki and Goto. On the limits coverage of the Autobacks Japan GT Championship was brought to you by Nissan.